Good morning. I'm Rosalie Schaefer, and on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I welcome you to our hot topic today. Today we're going to talk about charter government. It's a form of government that has been available to Florida County since 1968, but Manatee does not yet have it. Over 75% of Florida's population lives in 20 charter counties which range in size from Miami-Dade to Wakulla County. Charter is considered a more advanced and flexible form of government, able to shape its structure to fit the needs of the community. We will start today with a presentation on Charter Basics, what it is, what it changes, and how to adopt one. Then we will hear from our guest speakers. We are very proud to have with us today Lourdes Ramirez from Sarasota County, and she is with the League of Women Voters there, and she has also been the president of the Sarasota County Council of Neighborhood Associations. Then we'll have former Manatee County Commissioner Jane Von Hamen who will talk about a prior effort to obtain a charter for Manatee. Then following their presentations, we will have questions from the audience. At that time, we will ask everyone to line up over there and use the microphone on the floor and state your name. We also ask, since we're gonna be covering so much information today, that I give your audience members the um, opportunity to ask questions by not uh, going on with commentary as when you ask your questions. We all have opinions, but we do want people to get the information they need as well. Okay, we're going to start today with a slideshow. Um, the League has been involved in this discussion since 2012, and we had um, an expert from the Florida Association of Counties, Virginia Delegal, come down and do a hot topic for us then. And uh, she had a, a slideshow, and we borrowed quite a bit of that from our show today. Oops, here it is. Hey. Amazingly, the forward is working. Okay, um, here are some of the things we will be covering. We currently have what is called the constitutional form of county government, which is a mini version of the state government. But charter is not entirely new to Manatee, since all of our cities have charter government. A charter is a mini constitution that describes the structure, functions, and operations of the county. Okay, the basic difference is it can be hard to describe the differences since it includes so much. Examples are usually given are size of the commission, which in Florida ranges from five to 19 in charter counties. Most have a mixture of at-large and single member districts. At-large means you live in a certain district, but you serve at large, it can also mean that you don't necessarily have to live in a certain district. And single member districts mean that you live in a certain district and the people in that district are the ones who vote for you. Vote for or against you, rather. <laughs> um, rather than voting for, uh, rather than having the entire county vote for you. Um, some of them include a mayor-type position as more or less a county commission chair. 
Many have term limits. Some have elected county managers. Some change some of the constitutional offices to appointed offices or make them all nonpartisan offices or make just some of them, like the supervisor of elections or tax collector, nonpartisan. The choices are, are endless. Okay. Um, as Florida became more and more urban and complex, Florida counties wanted and were slowly granted more power and independent responsibility for local government. Counties that wanted even small changes in their structure or responsibilities before charter had to petition the legislature. Then the legislature found that much of their time and energy was spent dealing with these county requests. In 1968, a constitutional amendment was passed allowing counties to have the choice of home rule. Here's Florida counties. You can see a lot of them are uh, clustered in pen peninsular fl Florida. Now, I lived in, Mani in um, Bay County before I moved here, and amazingly enough, Bay County thought about having a charter once in 2000. It was a move uh, supported by the Chamber of Commerce in Bay County. However, it didn't gain traction in that effort failed. Um, well, uh, yeah, here's a listing of current charter counties. Note that Miami-Dade already had a charter before 1968. That was due to a special act of the legislature. Population size is a factor for charter, but also note that seven counties have a lower population than Manatee. And um, the, there are ongoing efforts to get charters in some of the others. Uh, Pasco County has recently been considering going charter. So it, it'll change from as time goes on. As for what can be contained in a charter, nearly everything. These are just some of the things that could be options in, for changes in ballot amendments. City-county relationships usually do not change unless by agreement they want to include cooperative elements. As an example in growth, in 2006, Volusia voters approved a charter commission proposal that requires schools to be in place for new students before new developments or zoning changes can be approved. Citizens in charter counties definitely have a lot more say in government. They can vote on charter changes offered to them or petition to have an addition or change to the charter. The charter document will spell out the percentage of the electorate signatures required for a citizen-initiated referendum change to a charter. Generally, it's between 5 and 10%. There are a couple of outliers, or a couple that have 4% as their um, required percentage for getting an amendment onto a ballot. And there's one county that got a charter but obviously did not care to have citizens messing with it. Wakulla County uh, has 40%, a 30% requirement for a charter changes. It is not, certainly not very possible to do. On recall, an official cannot be recalled simply because folks disagree with um, his, his um, voting. Recall is actually very rare in charters. There's one in, um, there was one in the city of Anna Maria some years ago for a violation of the Sunshine Law. The fastest way 
for charter to uh, a county to authorize a charter is to create a charter commission. The process is very detailed in state law. To obtain a charter by citizen petition requires a lot of signatures. For Manatee, 15% of the electorate would be 35,095 votes based on the number of registered voters we have today. And also one would need a bit more than that to make up for some signatures that may be invalid. This would not be a petition for a referendum and none of those rules apply except they do require validation of the signatures. This is merely a petition to the county commission to appoint a charter commission to create a charter. And uh, once they do that, and they hold the number of hearings they need to hold, then it can go on to the ballot for the vote of the citizens. And here's the timeline. If you want to see just how, how long it can take. <laughs> If uh, once the uh, petitions are signed and submitted, the charter must hold its first meeting within 30 days. The charter commission holds three public hearings during that time. Then it submits a charter within 18 months of its first meeting. And the county must hold an election from 45 to 90 days after receiving the charter. So when you add up all of these times, the longest it could take would be about two years. However, it could be done a lot in much less time if it becomes a real priority and they take the less, least amount of time they can take. The worst thing a county could do with a charter is to make dozens of changes to the status quo in the very first charter and put it all up for vote in its entirety. There would at least be some changes in it everybody would not like and it would have very little chance of being approved. It's a lot better to stick with the status quo and then after you have a charter, then you can start making the changes you think need to be made and let the citizens vote on each one individually. That way, if you offer like 10 referendums, you know, maybe five or more will pass and the others won't. It's just like when the state has its referendum elections. You know, some of them pass and some of them don't. Okay, now we'll cover the cons. I've been talking about all the advantages of charter, citizen empowerment, flexibility, doing innovative cooperative activities with the, count, with the cities, um, being able to have a lot of flexibility with um, being partisan, nonpartisan offices, number of commissions. And it basically, you'll be able to make the government fit the needs of the county rather than being straightjacketed into the constitutional mold. But the cons, yes, there are possible cons, just like anything else. The first one, what's wrong with what we have? Well, it goes to a basic fear of change. We know what we have, but we don't know what the change will be like, or whether we're gonna like it, is it gonna to lead to chaos? Even if some don't like the current system, they fear they may like the new system even less. Will it cost more money? It will at least cost some more money while the Charter Commission may be made up of volunteers, 
they will need office supplies, staff support. They'll take up time and space. Their meetings will be recorded. And if special elections are needed for charter voting, and that will cost. Yes, some changes may not work out well, and that might mean having to put them back on the ballot again and reverse the change. Um, Lake County has gone through this a different situation. Their school district, they've gone through this three times. They changed from single member, dis no, from at large districts to single member, five uh, positions. And then they decided that wasn't right. The cost is the same thing we have here. So they went to single member districts. And that didn't last long before there were all kinds of problems with that. And so they're going to put it on the ballot again. And now they're thinking of having two at-large positions and as well as some single-member districts. So it's like they need, they're searching for that happy medium. And that can happen with uh, a lot of things. Ballots will definitely get longer because, you know, you'll be voting on uh, referendums to change the charter or add something to the charter. Just like our city governments, when you look down at their ballot, you see they've got candidates for office, but they also may have, you know, anywhere from one to five charter changes. So it's a work in progress. It can constantly change with the needs of the time. <coughs> yes, charters work best if uh, dedicated individuals and groups of citizens uh, work on it or involved in it, comment on it, make recommended recommendations, and uh, uh, make sure that they are giving citizen feedback to the county at all times. If everybody just sits back and does nothing with it, then you know it may not end up being what they really wanted. Yes, there are a lot of pros and cons, but there is a really telling point, and that is none of the counties who have gone charter have ever gone back to the old system, you know, for all, you know, its faults. They feel that it's better than what they had, because if something's wrong with it, you can always change it. But if you're stuck in the constitutional form, you're just plain stuck unless you get your legislature to change it and you know, do a state local bill to make a change each time you want one. Yeah, and I've read a lot of the charters and I advise everybody to go online and just read some of their charters because they are amazing. They're amazing in the variety they have. And I'm always amazed. I love to read the preambles to them because they're, they're almost inspirational. They get to what is the purpose of government. Uh, government doesn't exist just to support a bunch of bureaucrats and a structure. It exists to serve the citizens and to create a government that works well. And, um, you know. This is uh, Broward County, so uh, much of that philosophy is summarized in this charter or preamble, and there are a lot of others like it. So if you would just hold your questions now, I will bring on our speakers. Okay, um, Lourdes, why don't you go first, because you can give them a, a snapshot of what uh, Sarasota is like. Well, while she's bringing up um, my pre short presentation, I just want you to know that it is not a, a big document. I mean, this is our charter. This is the Sarasota County Charter. It's very small, and this is big print. 
So I don't want you to think, oh, now we're going to have this major book we have to read. It is online at the Clerk of the Circuit Court of Sarasota County if you wanted to read it, but it's really very thin. And uh, so you don't have to think about it. It's a real heavy thing to read through and, and deal with because it's very, very small. Now, one of the many things we have in Sarasota County is the fact that our charter was the second charter to be adopted in the state of Florida. And the most special about our county charter is that we have the only elected charter review board in the state. And that's important to us. Somebody recently, last year, tried to change it from an elected board to an appointed board. Of course, it has to go before the voters to do that. We fought that tooth and nail. We want an elected board. We want them to be accountable to us. We didn't want some county commission appointing their cronies to a charter, a review board, and then, of course, do their bidding. So that was really important, and I wanted to point that out when I agree with Rosalie that you may want to start off with what you have, but make at least that one thing. Make your charter review board an elected board so they're accountable to you. Oh, I think she went over all that already. As I mentioned, it's a very thin um, booklet. These are our sections, you know, it's how the county works, how we organize our county, um, the solid waste management, taxes, and when I get to that part, it's one of my favorite parts, how we do our elections, and of course, all legalese. Now, how it benefited us. Back in 1990, we went to the county to citizens went to the county commission and said, we want a recycling. And they said, no, no, you, nobody's interested in recycling. So we, the citizens, put on the ballot that we mandated recycling in Sarasota County. And so that's how we got recycling. And we were one of the first counties to do so because we went to our charter. Another thing was term limits for county commission. Um, voter verified paper ballots because we were concerned that if with all the electronics out there, machines going down, we need something to verify votes, so we demand um, paper ballots. Now the next one, the limits on development outside the urban service boundary. Sarasota County has an urban area and a rural area, and the urban service boundary is around I-75. Well, we put in our charter, uh, provision that the county has to make sure any development outside of our urban area has to be fiscally neutral. That means they have to pay for their own roads, schools, and all other infrastructure. And that's something we put on there. Plus, if they're going to increase density, it has to be a unanimous vote. So we have that. Now, there is a concern that the state legislature likes to preempt local charter, and they did put language in the Florida legislature, to not allow too many growth management rules in our charter. But something you need to look at because, you know, they're constantly, I don't know if you read today's paper about HB 17, a proposal by a South Braver, Brevard uh, representative that wants to put in that no local government can have an ordinance affecting businesses. So if you want a noise ordinance, it has to go through the state. It, of course, it hasn't been approved. It's just an idea that he's putting forth. But those are the kinds of things that we have to not only look at our local charters, but see what the state's doing to preempt local home rule. So keep an eye on that one. We also have a limit on contributions to candidates locally, and it's a maximum of 200 per person, per company. Now the last one, the bonding limitations, is my personal favorite. So what we demand, as Sarasota County does, does that anything above, about what is now $21 million to spend, and they want to bond out, they have to go to the voters. So when Atlanta Braves came in, and they wanted a $100 million stadium, the county can't approve that. They have to go to the voters to do so. So right now, the Atlanta Braves is doing a private bonding with developers to try to get their stadium because the county can only give them about 21 million, not 100 million, which is what they want. And that's a favorite of mine because there's so many, you know, ways for the county to spend our money. And we want to make sure we have restrictions on that. You know, Rosalie already went over. Um, the citizen initiative, which is really good. It's, for Sarasota County, it comes about 14,000 signatures is required. 
think another thing I would you know warn you about when it comes to citizens initiative don't let any limits to when you can get the petition signed there's always been an attempt to do that to get 14,000 signatures that takes maybe months if we're lucky years to get so if they put limits saying you know signatures are valid for 60 days you're never going to get anything on the ballot so make sure there's no limits to when your citizens can get petitions signed. The Charter Review Board only meets three times a year in Sarasota County. That's not a lot of times. We only had about, you know, seven amendments to the Charter over the past 10 years. And one of them was the growth management one and term limits. So I wouldn't worry about that. It'll be a lot of amendments, maybe in the beginning, but after a while, you won't see that much. So it won't cost that much money. The, we have 10 members of our charter, two per district, because we have five districts, and they're all volunteer, they're unpaid. So it's not a real huge expense, except for when you have a special elections for amendments. But I think the charter itself, we spend more money on the planning commission, who's also a volunteer group, than we do on the charter review board. And it's really important to have. That's it for my presentation. I just wanted to give you an, an idea of how we do it in Sarasota County. We love our charter. And again, when somebody tried to change it last year, everybody came out in force to say, do not touch our charter. Thank you. And we're gonna do questions at the end? Good afternoon. Thanks very much for having us here today. I, I find it very interesting that once again, charter government in Manatee County is coming up. My name is Jane Von Hom, and I did serve on the county commission for eight years from 2000 to 2008. And actually, it was more like 2001 to 2008 because being elected in November. Wow, great presentation. Thank you so much. I, I watched that, and I think you know, that, that could definitely work here. That um, I was asked to speak about what happened during my term in office, which was, uh, it was one of the times that charter came up. But charter first initially came up in this county in 1983, and then again in 85, in 89, in 90, and then finally, I think that huge growth spurt drove a real hue and cry from the public in the 2000s, in early 2000s. And it was really driven by development looking to move into cities, municipalities, where some of the land development codes and comprehensive plans were not as stringent. They weren't being asked to meet that revenue neutral, which when I sat on the board, we were very much about being revenue neutral. We were very much about density control and not allowing large spikes over and above what was allowed by the comprehensive plan and the land development code at that time. So we had this loud cry out there, and we as a board of county commissioners, who got along very well, I might add, decided that it probably wasn't for us as a commission to go out and drive the train, so to speak, for charter. We told the public at that time, it needs to be something you take on. We will support you in that referendum or in that resolution that needs to be drafted once the, um, the committee meets or the commission meets and they put together the basic charter that then would come and be voted on by the board. We told them we would support them in that. But what we ended up doing was moving forward to address the issues that we saw at the time, which was, like I say, pretty much development driven. And we developed the accord. Now, I think the accord worked for the time that that, that particular commission sat, but I don't think, I, I think it's probably pretty much gone by the wayside now, I doubt. I don't even know if it's even used. Uh, the accord was developed so that a joint planning committee was put together, and whenever a property was looked at to be annexed into a city, then that joint planning committee came together and they addressed things like, um, intergovernmental coordination on services, utilities, parks, and recreation, fire, police. Who is gonna be responsible for that? If it's a property that abutted the county but annexed into the city, in most instances, the county was gonna be the provider of water and sewer. So how are we going to be, you know, 
um, get the impact fees associated with those connections when they were actually within the city itself from a standpoint of taxing and so forth. Compatibility, we had real issues with especially one development, I think which was the, I think probably the key driver was the um, Arvido, Preco Island development in the city of Bradenton, which has now actually moved forward. And I have to tell you, when I look at that development, because they, over time, stepped away from what originally came to the city and requested, there's no very tall buildings out there. That was another thing. We as uh, a community had said, we don't want 10, 12, 15 story buildings, you know, as Sarasota has. I mean, that's your, that's your ambiance, that's your, that's your character, but it wasn't what was here in Manatee County. So we said we wanted to participate in those types of, of um, decision making in the decision making process. And um, that particular development got challenged at the DCA level, I know, after it was approved, but that's the things that drove it. We did develop the accord. It uh, came about, and it's not a very long document either. This is actually the accord, the rules that um, govern the um, Joint Planning Commission, and the interlocal agreement that was developed. But I don't know if it isn't time to once again look at charter government. I will tell you that the municipalities are often not comfortable with charter government, although they have their own charters. We had a lot of a lot of um, cry that we were going to take try to take away their home rule and bind them under county charter. But I don't think that has to happen. And what the luxury we do have here is we have very few municipalities. I think of Polk County, which I think there's like 17 or 18 municipalities alone in Polk County. The list is very long. Um, but the other people who we heard a lot from and you're going to need to pay attention to and how you deal with them are your constitutional officers because they too were very afraid of, I don't know if it was manipulation of salary, manipulation of whether they would be partisan, um, you know, would be party affiliated or non-party affiliated, but we did hear from them that they were not comfortable. So these are some of the things that I got a feeling that when you go forward, if you move forward, that those are the types of things you're gonna hear about again when it comes to looking at charter for this county um this county well call county it's interesting because their population is only like forty thousand, and to have to get 30 percent of that that's pretty that's pretty mind-blowing but anyway so those are the comments that i have from um, my experience on the board i just personally found it incredibly interesting that actually in the in the 80s there actually was a um a charter study committee put together 20 people it's online their names uh, Isabel um, June Isabel was on that committee at the time Pat Glass if she could have been here today she served on the board for almost every single one of these attempts at charter here in Manatee County and Joe would have been another one to really be able to talk to you about the citizen part of charter because he was on the board for two of those attempts as well. So I thank you um, very much and uh, it's a lot of work I think you would really would like Rosalie say said you would have to be very dedicated you would have to really put a lot of effort in but it may be a time for us to to look at so that we as citizens because I think sometimes we feel like we don't have a say too much anymore especially on some of the things that go on at the board level even though we elect them they it's almost like we're not heard that well afterwards. So thank you very much. Yeah, and now we have our questions. And as moderator, I take my uh, uh, rights to ask the first question. I'd like to ask uh, Laura this Ramirez uh, about the um, the campaign contribution limits that came about in Sarasota. I think you all would be interested in hearing more about that. It's also another favorite of mine. I have to tell you that it is $200 per person per company, but we do have 
certain people in town, developers who have 10 companies, and they each one contribute to hundreds. So, but it's still much better than having a thousand or, or stuff, because they'll do that much as well. So our contributions are for all the constitutional officers and, and the local government, um, the county commission in particular. Uh, but oddly enough, it's as long as you're paid, that's you, then you have to abide by that. I mean, as a politician, a paid local uh, politician, then you abide by those rules. If you're unpaid, you, you don't. So our charter review board is not paid, so they don't have to abide by the $200 limit. Or and the school board is uh, also doesn't have to abide because that's actually dictated by the state. But all the others do. Um, our constitutional officers are partisan. We want to make it nonpartisan. I'm going to add that as a side note. Um, but we don't, and they get pushed. They did push us back also that they didn't want. Uh, any restrictions on them. So you may hear a little bit about that as well. But anyway, going back to the contributions, I think it's really a good thing for us to have that. They, there have been talks about eliminating that, but I think for grassroots, that's the best way to go. Yeah, I noticed in uh, many of the charters I looked at that they have a statement right in the charter that says, the constitutional officers will not be changed in their status in, in pay. And that sort of takes that you know, road hump out of the process. They, they won't be threatened. Okay, we're ready for some questions from the audience. If you would use the microphone over there. Oh, uh, that's okay. You don't have to get up, Katie. Um, just tell me, tell me what your question is. Thank you. Wow, you all are so nice. Uh, Katie Parola, I used to be the mayor of Bradenton Beach years ago, and what drove me to be so interested in this was this final straw that broke the camel's back, is the mosaic thing that they want to drill in Manatee County. And your question is? That, 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 that can be eliminated in the charter. No mm -hmm. mining in Manatee County, and I think Sarasota has that already. So that's one thing. And then it's just, you know, my husband was very sick, and while I was in the hospital day after day for about five years, I did my own little study about how many amendments this county has done in the comprehensive plan based on the people that are, let's see, the population between 200 and 300. Thousand. You can't go with Hillsborough County, but you can with Bannington County because we have about 300,000 people here. So guess who has more amendments than anybody within that range of population is Manatee County. And I think, and we all know who those developers are. It's no sense making the names, give the names. I mean, this conquistador thing, that alone should prove how much we need a charter. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, next question. I'd like to ask um, Lourdes what kind of process they went through to get their charter as far as getting the signatures is concerned. How did you organize? What kind of requirements did you have? For amendments? No, to get your petition signatures in the first place to give to the county to get you a city commission oh, started. Back, back in 1971. <laughs> I'm not even 100% sure because when, when the state created the ability in 68 for charter counties to go in, we were one of the first ones to jump on board. And I think it was really, um, that was done by the county commission at the time. And then they started off with a preliminary charter review board for the first few months to create the charter and then we had a vote. So I know that's how the process was. So you didn't have to go out initially and get signatures not because the county then. commission took it up. As far as I know, not back then, because it was so new and everybody was on, coming on board at that time to do it. Right, that's part that concerns me, just the initial. Cur yeah, the initial, now currently, of course, we need the signatures to change it, but back then I think we were just on board. Okay, um, my name is Barbara Elliott and I'm with Stone Soup Community Please Unity. Use the microphone. Yeah, okay. um, I'm with Stone Soup Community Unity. 
We formed about a year ago to fight against the city taking Glacier Gates Historical Park and giving it to developers. Then we tried a recall of city council people, but it was way, way too complicated. However, we're having a meeting at the library this Saturday between 2 and 4 p.m. to organize. We are, as Jane said, offering to drive the, cha the train on this initiative. We have a political action committee. Um, we also have what's called a hardship waiver in place. 35,000 signatures are gonna cost 10 cents a piece. Our waiver, we have it right now. It gives us the right, if we don't have the money in our account, we don't have to pay to valid, verify them. So that cuts expenses to do this right there. And we're just looking to organize with some people, get a couple committees going. We pretty much, we're ready to rock and roll. So please come Saturday and let's put our heads together and get this thing on the road. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to point out that if all the counties that have charter, not a single one had to be started by the citizens petition. Now, all the other counties saw this as an opportunity to make a better government that was more responsive to the citizens and had more options for its organization and they, they went into it themselves. And, uh, yes, and uh, any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've got a question. Um, in this recent decision by the commission with about the mosaic uh, expansion, uh, there were tw over 2,100 email comments about 95% email comments online, and there were about 95% were against the expansion. Um, there were 78 public speakers at the commission, 73 of which were opposed. What would have been our tactic to try to have our officials represent us properly if we were indeed a charter versus a non-charter government. Could we have done something? And if so, what would we have done? It seems to me if we're going to build this kind of a charter movement, we have to show the public specifically what the difference would be if we had been a charter and therefore more effective in showing our elected officials what the majority of the constituents want. Well, if we had charter way back when, the citizens could have done a referendum that would have um, either prevented mining in some areas of the county or uh, required um, stipulations that would have made it a lot less uh, dangerous to uh, both public and environmental health as well as our water supply. Um, the fact that the county commission, the majority of them ignored so many citizens who protested the Wingate mine, shows a real need in this county for charter government. Yeah. I, I want to address a little bit about growth management. It is, uh, we don't have a prohibition on mining in the charter. We do have regulations, but not, uh, in, you know, when it comes to growth management, that's difficult, especially now that we have the state that preempts and wants to continue preempting our local charter. So what we have in Sarasota County are, are types of stipulations that make it um, a little harder. So, so by saying that the project has to be fiscally neutral or you need a unanimous vote, that's one way. Another thing that happened recently, we had a proposal to build a recycling center and a restaurant depot right next to our celery fields, which is a environmentally sensitive area for us for birding. And uh, the, what's helping us is one of our provisions in our charter says you have to reveal who all the interested parties in making a rezoning. So someone, a, a public official or a relative of a public official is not hiding behind an LLC and benefiting from these kinds of uh, rezonings. So we have to have that revelation. You have to reveal who the parties are who want the typical change in zoning 
uh, or change in the comprehensive plan. And that is what stopped it, at least at this time, because the developers didn't want to completely reveal who the parties interested in that land was. So there are, there are certain things you could look at, a lawyer would have to look at to make sure that you're not stopping on property rights, but there are ways to just raise the bar a little bit to not make it so easy for the county com commission to say yes and rubber stamp all growth management's you know, changes. May I ask, make a comment and a question? Probably more comment than question. Um, Larry Grossman and I uh, live on Longboat Key. We have a town government. We have uh, a charter. Uh, there's now a process. Uh, every 10 years, the charters, we have a charter review. And so that is this, this is that 10th year. So they're appointing members to the charter committee. Um, I'm in the Manatee County portion of Longboat Key, so I have a great interest to see that uh, Manatee County uh, obtain a charter, because I think there's a lot of imbalances of power that have to be corrected, and it could perhaps only be done through a charter. And um, uh, a curious thing that we have, <laughs> which you can't do anymore, by the way, but um, uh, we're one of, I think, only two or five, perhaps, jurisdictions in the state that um, has a, uh, as in their charter provision, that density increases can only be uh, done or approved through a referendum process. And so we now have for the colony, which is falling apart, uh, there's a proposal to add residential units, so that's an increase in density. And so that's the biggest issue on Longboat Key is this referendum, and that brings out lots of folks. Now, I have problems with this approach, but there's, there's an example of something that, I don't think you can do this anymore in Florida, they're gonna preempt it. They eliminated all these <clears throat> density by referendum provisions, but we appealed and uh, got it reenacted. But I know how it works in Longboat Key is like the only thing that the citizens have is a recourse to stop unwanted growth and the pressures to redevelop properties. It's a very handy tool. The, the problem, the other side of it is that they have a very weak comprehensive plan. The, the other thing I wanted to comment is uh, something you could put in, what I notice, which I'm amazed at, is, is the ability of these counties to sell off public land, <clears throat> like the, the properties near the celery fields. I've never seen a process like this. They can just declare properties surplus without much process at all. So that might be something, uh, no, no sale of public land, um, unless there's a, you know, describing a whole process. I think there's lots of good things that you can put in this charter um, that'll give, give citizens a, a, a way of a check on what I see are, are very weak comprehensive plans and processes that uh, citizens are just behind the eight ball each time. So this is the way to counterbalance uh, what's, what I see as a very pro-development pro uh, uh, comp comprehensive plans, with few backstops and opportunities for citizens to really effectively um, get anything uh, stopped. Uh, so. I'm lazy, not walking across the room. So my question is, is um, that the citizens get together, they go out and they gather these uh, signatures, the signatures needed, 35,000 signatures. Then they take them to the county commission who then has to approve accepting those signatures and then they put together the um, charter committee. So when you initially present to the county commission, is it at that time that you request that those people who are to, to serve on the development of the charter be elected by or is it you're saying that once the charter is established so therein however that committee is chosen because I was looking at the list that I have from um, 84 and uh, it's a pretty diverse list but it's you know the bar associations representative League of women voters district people are picked how does that how would that happen? That group that initially puts the charter 
to go on referendum together? How would that happen? The, the way Sarasota County had it, um, we put on that we wanted a charter, and, and a charter review board was appointed by the county commission temporarily until the next full election where then we can elect a charter review board. That's how we did it. I believe it's possible to, to do it, but I think that might be too much to ask on a ballot from the get-go. I think just having the county agreeing to have a charter, and then going to having a charter review board appointed until they create the charter, and then approve, go another referendum to approve the created charter and charter review board members, because you need to set up the rules. So I think the first step is just making, maybe make it simple. We have a referendum that you want a charter and an appointed charter review board to create a charter instead of trying to do everything from the get-go. When you had the, 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 the study, committee, study committee. That they were supposed to build this starter charter. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. So it was a starter charter they were trying to put together. They, um, the Board of County Commissioners um, voted on each member. It was a 20 board member that was looking at it. I, I have no clue. I cannot find any additional documentation on what actually even happened um, to that group. I, I just can't find it. But um, how, I'm just, my mind, I gotta wrap my mind around how many people, I guess the more the merrier, but you don't want it so big, and that, but you don't want it so small that then the selection is very, you know, specific and, and can be manipulated too well. So you want it broad enough, I would think that, um, who they choose can represent everyone, not just certain. The, the structure of the Charter Review Board is we have five districts in Sarasota County, and we do everything basically on commission districts. Um, that's what we base a lot of it, and we have two per district. And then, of course, every election, there's five who are up for re-election. So it's, it's, that's how we do it. We follow basically the same outline. You don't want too many different outlines for um, district boundaries. So following the county commission would be good. You have an at-large, so that might be different, but that's how I would do it, at least two per district. We have seven, five, uh, district and two at-large. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, something else that uh, can be done. Planning commissions are famous for being composed mostly of people from the development sector. So one wonders why, you know, they uh, come out with the decisions they do. It's pretty obvious. Anyway, um, what you can do once you have a charter is request that through referendum that it reflect the citizenry of the county and not just all from one sector, from, from a variety of uh, walks of life of the, uh, the county. And uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was recall. A lot of people think that if you get recall in the charter, that means you can remove somebody simply because you don't like the way they vote. And that's not so. You'll be limited to the conditions that are in the Florida Constitution, which are misfeasance, malfeasance, and then a variety of others. Uh, perpetual drunkenness is one of them. <laughs> yeah. In, inability, inability to do their job. And, um, what about alternative facts? Yeah. So, <laughs> but anyway, there was a recall in Anna Maria Island some years ago, and they did it on a violation of the Sunshine Law. Although I think they, the main trigger was they didn't like the way he was voting. But he, he slipped up and they got it. Okay, next question. And you can address it to any one of our panel. Uh, my name is Ed Goff, and um, I have observed that there's a lot of people that are very unhappy with the government in Manatee County. But when, when it comes right down to it, 
uh, not very many people are willing to do anything about it. And you look at this group today, it's relatively small. We have 350,000 people and we probably don't even have 100 people here today. So my question is, how do you get the people fired up so that they want to really devote some time and get involved with this, something that's very good, it'd be good for the whole county, it'd be good for everybody. I think a lot of people don't believe that they can, it can really happen because the developers have this, the county so tight, so sewed up. So I don't think we can do it like Sarasota did it where they got the Board of Commissioners to appoint a commission. We need to get the signatures, but how do we get 35,000 signatures well, I've been to your meetings, some of your meetings. You're the Glazer Gates lady, right? Yeah, I was involved in that. I, I, I pushed for that too, and I think that was atrocious what the city did to that beautiful park and cut down those huge hundred-year-old trees that probably could have stood another couple hundred years. And it's just, it's sickening what they're doing down there. And then we've got to stop that. But how do we get um, people fired up? And I look at no uh, offense, please, but um, look at the age of the people here. <laughs> you know, I know people have to work, but at the same time, you know, most of us are, uh, you know, retired. And that's probably why there's so many people here today that look, that have snow on the roof. <laughs> or on a... On a <laughs> microphone, please. What? Give her the microphone. Oh. Katie, wait. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank Listen, what fired me up this time is that we're in the computer world now, and things are a little bit different. You know, we can do things. This guy right here is a guru on the computer, so is my son. I just spent $500 to get the tower that you need, and I call it the brains of the computer, to separate the 35,000 names by zip code, phone number, email, address. So you know, that's a start. And, and another thing is to ask these people that are here, who, with what you've just heard, and what's been going on this county for so many years? How many are you for the charter? Yeah, you see? Because it's the only thing we got left, Rosie. And thank you so much for doing this for us today. You're welcome. Thank you. That's it. Are you doing it? I'd just like to read something in answer to Jane's question. Um, it says that you have to appoint in Florida state law that you have to appoint between 11 and 15 people and it has to be an odd number. So y'all please come Saturday so we can talk about these kinds of things to the Central Library. Hello, I'm Eileen Lubell, I'm from Manatee County. Has Sarasota County prevented the sale of the excess land near the celery fields? Will these people who want to send these trucks through still be able to do it? Can I have an answer? Um, that vote has been postponed till April because of the fact that the, um, we used the charter to say well, they're not revealing everyone who's interested in buying that land. In the meantime, since we have now this extra time, we put a group together who is fighting the sale to begin with because there was only one bid and it didn't seem to be really competitive. And actually, it's one of our Charter Review Board um, board members who is interested in part of the property. So we're looking at conflict of interest. But what bought the time was the fact that uh, we used the charter to say, hey, they're not completely honest who's going to be buying this land. Um, we do want to address the sale of land. We actually have a petition out there um, that's going around. It only has 8,000 signatures. We need 14,000 in which, in this case, that case was the sale or giveaway of public lands to beach owners. They, there was a street called Beach Road on Siesta Key that the county gave to some 
uh, beach owners who want to build up practically all the way to the beach and hopefully not stop um, all the things that the people who want to use that beach. So we are working on that now. We're trying to change the charter to talk about government lands and trying to stop um, the sale of public lands without consulting the voters. When in April? April 26th. Thank you. Okay, that's all the time we have oh. today. I, I just, all right, give me what, just, what is it? Okay, I'm Debbie Glow, and some of you, Jeff, people probably recognize me because I'm a, a prob problem child at the BOCC. I first started with the animals, now I'm trying to help with the um, eco ecosystem. So what I want to know is, and Jeff's made that remark about, um, okay, if we go before the Board of Commissioners in this county and ask them to become a charter county, it's they're going to wipe us out. I'm telling you that. They're going to lose they don't want to lose their power. So what I'm seeing is we would have to get a petition before and present it to them with 35 or 40,000 signatures. Is, is that what the law says? Okay, because otherwise forget it. It ain't going to happen. Yeah. And the other thing I want to know, how does, maybe you would know, um, social media, would we be able to put that um, petition on social media? For electronic. Yeah. Electronic? Uh -huh. yeah. You, should, you should be able to put the PDF of the form, yeah. the petition form, on the website and on Facebook page that people can download, sign it, and yeah. send it. Yeah, because we run, at, at, between Agatha and I, we have three Facebook pages that we, we do. So I wanted to know if we could put mm -hmm. that petition on there and well, take it before. It's easier now to oh, get are? things out to the public than it used to be. Yeah. But I want to thank you all for coming today, and especially to our speakers for sharing their information. And our um, program, for those who, who couldn't make it, and you know someone who you know would like to see it, It'll be on METV within uh, a few days. And they can go on www.metvweb.com and then click on their YouTube link and watch the whole program on your computer. Or you can look at their broadcast schedule and watch it on your television. And I want to thank them very much for the service that they perform for us. We're very excited about our next program, which will actually be on a weekend, April 22nd. It'll be our annual meeting and program. We're going to have a famous local author, uh, David Hull. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's a, a futurist. He's written a lot of books about the future, and uh, he wants to talk about uh, what's needed to make us better stewards of our planet. And um, I have flyers about that on the table. So if you want to take one and fill it out, we'd love to have you there. It'll be at the Bradenton Country Club, April 22nd, starting at 1130. So we hope you can make that. And we thank the Bradenton Women's Club for the use of their facility and encourage anyone to um, join them or um, go to their events. They have their flyers in the lobby. They do a wonderful job taking care of this building and having uh, community charitable events. And yes, yeah, so our petitions oh. on the table. Okay. If you want to get started signing a charter petition, by the way, a commissioner told me back in 2013 that if enough people came to her and said they wanted a charter, that she would consider doing it. I don't know what enough people are, but we need to start telling them that we want a charter. Is this person still a commissioner? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a few. Yeah.